the biblical truth of our hymns. Today we're going to look at O Holy Night and start off with written by a wine merchant and poet. And I'm going to P L A C I D E C A P P E A U. A Unitarian minister, John Sullivan Delight, editor of the White Journal for Music, translated the song into the English lyrics in 1855. To celebrate the event, the parish priest asked the wine merchant and poet, and his name, a native of the town, to write a Christmas poem. Even though the latter had never shown an interest in religion, so a priest as the man who has no interest in religion to write a poem for Christmas. Following his father's footsteps to the extent he became a merchant of wines and spirits. However, his focus is in his life was literature. And Christmas has that spirit of Christmas. And shall we turn to the Bible always? Let the Bible be our guide. First John chapter four, verse one. Chapter four, verse one of first John. And the Bible says, Beloved. Believe not every spirit, Christmas spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. So, here we go. And we're not even at the carol or hymn, but we're looking at the foundation. And the foundation of Christianity is Jesus Christ that no other rock, no other way that man can have, but that the one that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, the foundation of the Mormons is a man in New York State, golden plates, eyeglasses, sunglasses, whatever kind of glasses. The foundation of the Catholic Church is upon man, upon uh, angels, and Mary, and traditions. And the foundation of Old Holy Night, not looking too well. A parish priest is not Baptist. It would be either Catholic or Protestant. Now shall we dine in to Holy, Old Holy Night. Old Holy Night. Well, Holy Night, yes, Jesus was born. But what made the night holy? How about O oh, Holy Child? O oh, Holy Jesus? And we're not going to dwell on this much because we're going to get into this again. But what made the night holy? The humble birth of Jesus Christ from, from a throne in heaven to the stable. But we got a reverence to a, another holy. To make a holy day a holiday. The stars are brightly shining. Now how do we know the stars were shining? How do we know they were shining brightly? Could there have possibly been a cloudy night? Could it have been possible that the stars would not have been seen? Maybe it was a stormy night. But you see, we add to the Bible. And if I may read from the Bible, it says in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him at the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, Keeping watch over their flock, okay, by night. There it is, night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. 
and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day a city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in the manger. That manger of swaddling clothes was the only place that Mary and Joseph could find for Jesus to be born. It's also a sign to the Jewish shepherds. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. It came to pass the angels were gone away from them into heaven. Into heaven, you know. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see the th this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came to hate. I didn't see anything about a starry night. I didn't see a forecast. We're reading more into what the Bible has. Now, as far as the birth of Jesus, I can run scripture with scripture. But if I were to come out and say that, oh, the swallowing clothes were purple. And Mary had a white gown with a blue shawl. I'd be adding to the Bible more than what the Bible says. It is a night of the dear Savior's birth. Well, that's true. But let's get another fact here. December 25th is not the night that Jesus was born. And around December 25th, I don't know so much of this day and age, but in the month of December, Old Holy Night would have been, I'm not sure if it's sung today, because it's not much about Jesus today. December 25th is not the birthday of Jesus. The night that Jesus was born by the Bible is unknown. And yet with scripture, possibly the seventh Jewish month, possibly the Feast of Tabernacles. But the Bible never says, and I'm making that statement the night that Christ was born, the Savior. We will jump our head right away to December 25th, Christmas Day. Christmas is not in the Bible. Let me lay out. People say, let's put Christ back in Christmas. Let me tell you what Christmas is without Christ. It's a mass. M-A-S. Let's put Christ back in it. It's a Christ mass. No Bible-believing Christian, more so the Baptist faith and church, ever has a mass for Christ or a Christ mass. Now let me put it even further. We've got happy birthday, happy new year. Happy 4th of July. Happy Labor Day. Happy Halloween. And yet this time of the year we have Mary Christ Mass. I'll put it together. Merry Christmas. But if we were to put it slow, Mary, we know well, we know who Mary is. Yeah, she's the she's the mother of Jesus. But in the Catholic Church, she is a goddess. She's a deity, and we put her first before Christ because she is the mediator of Catholics, where for us, Jesus is the mediator between God and man. So Mary, Christ, Mass. Christ, Jesus, was never in Christmas. And it would be a lie to put him back in what he was never in. And again, we're going back... To the holy night. Holy means set apart. And there certainly is no light night like this one. And it was certainly night. And Luke chapter 2 verse 8 we see. Watch over their flock by night. So it was night. It was night. Long lay the world in sin and error, pining till he appeared 
and so and the soul left left and the soul felt its worth. So long lay the world in sin is true. For all have sinned, for all have come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Error, that's a kind, nice little word, you know, to cover up sin and make it good. I mean, that's just as much as shacking up, having an affair, when it's adultery and fornication. Um, let's make it alive, pink, blue, purple, green, polka dotted. With sin. S I N N. Sin. I give him credit for mentioning sin. And it wasn't the appearing of our Savior at the birth that rids of sin. As this carol would think you to think. Would think. Oh, Jesus is born and all our sins are gone. Everybody is saved. Everybody's going to heaven. That's absolute incorrect. That's a lie. The riddance of sins is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. I am not saved because Jesus was born. Now, Jesus was born. Jesus is God. Yes, we've got the story of the birth of Jesus, but that's not the complete story. The finishing of our salvation is the empty tomb and that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father right now and soon to come to get his bride. So by Jesus being born, I'm not washed of my sin. No one is washed by their sins by the birth of Jesus. We put too much emphasis on the birth of Jesus. The emphasis is what, what, what the Bible says, the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the truth. All thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. The weary world. Jesus says, marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hated me. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And John 1.1 1, 1 says he came unto his own. And his own received them not. There was not no glad celebration. There was no great wonder of, of orchestra of Jewish people running to the manger to see Jesus. The Bible only records, we don't know how many shepherds came. See, all the world wants that baby that we can control a baby. They don't want the man, Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus, sinless perfection, God manifested in the flesh, suffered and died on that cross, not by my merits, but by the merits of Jesus Christ alone. So you might be able to pay off a man, but you're not going to pay off God when it comes to sin. It is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me and no baby can say those words it was the man christ jesus that john 14 verse 6 was spoken it's the man christ jesus not the baby yeah the baby yeah jesus was born but he also grew up fall on your knees amen glory to god fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices whoa give them credit on that one Got to give them credit in that one. I'll give credit where credit's due. They did not say ain't the angels sang. They said the voices. The voices. The soul felt its worth line is rather unclear. As we'll see here. But we do know that God's love us enough to sacrifice his son, John 3, 16.
To hear the angel's voice is a night divine. O oh, night when Christ was born. Again, not December 25th. When he was born, it was night. O oh, night divine. Okay, now we run into trouble. Divine. Now we run into trouble. Divine means to relation to God. Gods. Goddesses. Divine is to make holy. So when we have old night divine, we have put forth to make the night God. Small G-O-D. Oh, holy night. Old night divine. We have made a God out of night. And this is the condemnation. Light come in the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. You have made an evil God. O oh, holy night. O oh, night divine. Let's go through. Led by the light of faith. The glowing hearts of his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming. Here came the wise men from the Orient land. The king of kings lay thus in lowly manger. In all our trials born to be our friend. He knows our need. To our weakness is no stranger. Behold your king. Before him, lowly bend. Behold your king. Before him, lowly bend. Truly he has taught us to love one another. His law is love. His gospel is grace. Chains shall he break. For the slave is our brother. Probably won't like that one today. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. That's good. Oh, praise his name forever. His power and glory forevermore. Proclaim his power and glory. Evermore proclaim. Now again, we're looking at December 25th is not the day of Jesus' birthday. We don't know. It is night, according to Luke 2 a but yet we've got old holy night. We've got old night divine. The world lies in sin, but the birth of Jesus does not give us the atonement of sin. Had Jesus stayed that baby forever and ever that you bring out of the attic, you bring out of the garage, you bring out of the boxes, you bring out that baby every year, that baby is not going to save your soul. We must rest assured that that baby has grown up. That baby went to the cross. That baby was nailed to the cross. That baby shed God's blood, Acts 20, 28, that we may have redemption. It wasn't the appearing of our Savior at birth. It was the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried according to the scriptures and arose again the third day. When the world rejoiced, when, the, when Jesus said himself, marvel not if the world hates you, know it hated me. In John 3, 19, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. The world didn't stop pining after Jesus' parents. Actually, the whole creation still groans. Waiting for the glory to come. Romans 8, 22. Again, soul felt its worth it, it, unclear. But we know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
He gave us that son. That son was born in the manger. It was not December 25th, but that son grew up. And we got a new and glorious, a new era, a new thing has come. The law is coming to the end. The law will be fulfilled by Jesus Christ. But we are not yet in the New Testament by the birth of Jesus. A testament is brought on by a death of the person of the testator. When we look at the Gospels and our Bible said New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's kind of wrong. Because that New Testament does not begin until the fact it is finished. And he gave up the ghost and died. You would be foul if you were to grab someone's will and apply that will to your life before they've died. Hear the angels' voices. I could get, I've got to give him credit for that one. He did not say the angels sing. Most of all the carols do put angels singing. O night divine, of relating to a God, you mean to tell me that, O holy night, O night divine, you are advocating night as a God. God says, be holy for I am holy. God is holy. God is righteous. That holy applies to God in his ways. And when you put, oh, holy night, you are putting an aptitude of God for the night. That night wasn't holy. I'll tell you what was holy. The time that Jesus Christ suffered and died. And that's not even it. If Jesus Christ was born and died on that cross, of no effect. They took that body off the cross and they put it in the, in the tomb. They sealed that tomb. They put the rock on the tomb. That wouldn't have done it. And yet, what fulfills as a Christian is the empty tomb. There were 400 people. 400 people saw the resurrected Christ. There was not that many there at the birth of Jesus. Mary and Joseph and a few shepherds. But at the resurrection of Jesus, Mary and the women saw. The two men on the road in, in uh, Emilius. The disciples in the upper room. Again, there's disciples in the upper room with Thomas. And then 400. And then Paul. There are more people that saw the resurrected Christ than that night that Jesus was born. Kind of shows you where God puts his priority. We have a physical witness and, and testimony to the resurrection. It's written in all four Gospels and yet... The birth of Jesus. It's only one gospel. We see him saying that the shepherds. We'll get to that in a moment. So it seems to me that they're making the night a God. Calm, peaceful, and tranquil beaming. Yeah, that's what the Holy Spirit can do for us. That's what God can give to those who have put their faith upon Jesus Christ. And it says we stand at the cradle. I do not stand at the cradle of Jesus Christ. If you were to give me a nativity scene for, for a gift and all that, if you don't take it back, it's going to go in the garbage. Yeah. I kneel. I don't stand. I kneel at the cross of Jesus. And I await the empty tomb. There is no reverence of his birth as religion would impose. The true salvation, the two true works of God is the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures. Nowhere does Paul write to any churches. Nowhere does any New Testament writer write to us to say, observe the birthday of Jesus. And yet, if we were to get the birthday of Jesus, we've got it so ass backwards that we give each other presents and we don't give God nothing. 
As Christians who are saved, there are many Christians that celebrate Christmas, but they will not give themselves to God. They will not give themselves to Jesus. And yet they will go into their church and say, I surrender all and don't. And we've got a time now, a new thing, certain recent years is Black Friday. Is that a word that goes with the Holy God? A Black Friday that takes over that one day of the year that our country celebrates the thanksgiving to God and his provision to the pilgrims of this country. Where we're, hurry up and eat, put it away, get away, because i got to go shopping tonight. And the love of thankful of God, i got to hit you to get that TV set, i got to beat you up to get in there. That's what America has come to. It's a poetic way to describe how we remember his birth, but Jesus is no longer a baby, nor is there a cradle anymore. He is seated at the right hand of God in majesty. Hebrews 1.3. You do not pick up Jesus in your arms and go, oh, cute little baby. That little lamb of God that came to save us our sins, it will come back as a lion of the tribe of Judah. Led by the star. Let's read what the Bible says. And he was led by the stars. But let's look at the Bible. Matthew chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? King of the Jews. We're going to see that in the morning. We're going to see. Behold your king, Jewish king, Jewish king. He's never king of the church or the Christians. King of the Jews, for we have seen his star, there it is, in the east, and are come to worship him. And we'll go down to verse number 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were come into the house, you don't keep oxen in the house. Your mother will be very unhappy. You do not bring the cows and the sheep into the, into the house. Your wife is going to kill you. You do not bring those animals into the house. You bring them out to the stable. Into the house, they saw the young child with Mary. Notice how Mary comes after the child. Not Mary, Christ, Mass his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now verse 16, same chapter. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked at a wise man, don't know how many, more than two, was exceedingly rough and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and all the coast thereof from two years old and under so there is a guesstimation of the scriptures that we can say jesus christ was under two years old and we don't even know at what age that is so okay they were led by the star and we have how do we know sweetly gleaming where do we get this from? I read to you out of the Gospel of Luke. I read to you out of Matthew chapter 2. Why are we adding to the story of the birth of Jesus in the Matthew and Luke? But if I were to get up and if I were to quote a modern Bible out of a pulpit in a Bible-believing Baptist church, you would not have, well, you should not have me come back for a later service. A lot of church as well. We've been in churches where the Bible has been corrected out of that pulpit and nothing is said. That's wrong. And yet I know people are going to hear some of these videos. They are Bible-believing King James honoring men. And if they were hearing me correct the Bible, they would turn me off rightfully. We're King James. Oh, holy night, let's change the Bible now. And you just keep on singing all three stanzas. And you might make a comment. Well, yeah, some of those verses are wrong, but it's a no, no. Is it wrong or is it right? Is it Bible correct or is it Bible incorrect? Again, now the wise men from the east. The Bible says east. It does not mention Orient. Now, Orient me may mean east. That would be China, Japan, the Philippines. The, 
Maybe they didn't come from that far east. Maybe they came from Babylon. Babylonians would be the ones watching the stars. That's not really far east. It's east. So when you change Orient, as this hymn does, you may have made the wise men come even further than what they came. But the Holy Spirit said east. They say Orient. That's changing the word of God. At least we touch it was an addition to the word of God. It's not what God said. God didn't say thou shalt touch it. He says, if thou shalt surely, if thou eat of the tree, the knowledge of the tree of yeah, good and evil, thou shalt surely die. There's no touching. That was not in there. That was added. Now, king of kings may have laid in that manger the king of the Jews. But that's not when the, when the wise men came. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 9 through 12, and verse 16, I just read you. They came to, he, Jesus is in a house, and he's maximum two years old. I wouldn't even say that much. I think King Herod, man, he put a margin there. That we're going to make sure we're going to kill that baby. Probably one. We'll go from birth all the way to two. Make sure we get that child. But there were no, he doesn't say three, but we're just telling you, there's no three wise men and they did not show up at the manger scene. They're not with the shepherds and Jesus is not wrapped in swaddling clothes when they bring their gifts. That's all a lie. How can we kick Santa Claus? How can we kick the Easter Bunny? We'll, we'll tell them that there's no two fairy, but we'll set up the nativity scene and tell them that the wise men showed up with the shepherds, which is also a lie. How many, how many Baptist churches, Baptist churches from now and already maybe has happened up to December 25th are going to get their children all dressed up in sheets. They're going to get their, they're going to get the dog looking like a sheep and they're going to get the cat looking like a cow and they're going to get all these parts. And they're going to have the baby and they're going to have all the parents there. Their unsaved families are going to see the children act out something that's not biblical and then you want them to get saved. Bring all the people, bring all the unsaved so they can get the gospel message of our Christmas message, our Christmas pageant, which has nothing to do with the Bible. It's not laid out by the Bible, and you want them to get saved by using non-Bible ways. Not going to happen. You might as well just say, say this prayer. Because the wise men did not show up when Jesus was born. The shepherds did. Now, Bend the knee to Jesus. Amen. We ought to all bow our knees to Jesus. Some are going to do it before they die. In salvation. Some of them are going to do it after they die. In condemnation and damnation. He was born that Savior. But John says, he that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You can coo that baby all you want, but if you will not receive the man Christ Jesus, if you will not bow the knee at Calvary's cross, and if you will not come out of that empty tomb as a believer, you're not saved. Jesus commanded us to love thy neighbor, and we're commanded to love one another in the brethren. But that's not a biblical thing in this in this hymn, what we see. So that's just the general love everybody. Be sweet, tender hearted, give everybody sugar, give everybody peppermint sticks, and give them, you know, ice cream with, with whipped cream and cherries on top. And then when you preach Christ Jesus, you preach the resurrection and you preach the gospel, and they stick their finger in your face and say, that's not how Jesus would do it. Judge not least he be judged. That's bittersweet. That's saltiness. And then they'll turn around and say, well, preach more love of Jesus. What more love can you get? I'm telling you how to have a right relationship with God. This stanza three has no being with unsaved world to get the false identity of love thy neighbors and all that. 
It says the law is love. The law shows us I am guilty before a holy God. The love is Jesus Christ, John 3, 16. God is love. Why did he put the law is love? The law is to say condemned. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And the one that is love says, come unto me, all you heavy laden and burning. The, the one that loves us says, I am not willing that any should perish. That's love. The law ain't love. The law is to come down hard upon us and say, guilty. And then the gospel is the grace, mercy, and peace. You got to have all three. When He says the gospel is peace. That's it. Is not the gospel that I am saved, I'm going to heaven, I will never enter in the gates of hell forever. My sins are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Something that I have not done, something I cannot do, something I need to rely on God totally. Yes, it gives me peace, but it's also grace and mercy. You've given the gospel a short hand and given more attribute to the law by saying love. Is not the gospel love that God so loved the world that he gave his only be It is not the law gave anything. Guy doesn't know what the law is. The law is a schoolmaster, the Bible, to show who I am. And then when I'm condemned, I'm guilty, I'm vile, I'm wicked. I deserve to be slammed by the wrath of God. Then comes the gospel of grace, mercy, and peace. And if I have received the Son, I will have eternal life. The atonement of sins canceled sin by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let every knee, says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under him in heaven given by among men, whereby we must be saved. Now we read that there was a parish priest that wanted this poem to be come out around Christmas, which Christmas is not. Christian. It's not Bible. Especially a priest is not Christian. He's not Bible. And he wants a hymn for his celebration. But there is another God to the Catholic. There is another God out in the world. It's Mary. It's money. It's sex. It's whatever man loves more than God. Now we talked about, O Holy Night, O Night Divine, because of those statements there where we make God night and make night a God. My opinion is I omit this entire hymn or carol, whatever you want to call it, because night is not God. Shalom is a God of the dust. Apith. Egyptian God, the serpent God, the identification of evil and darkness. Nut, what a, what a name for a God, Nut. That's the Egyptian God of night, the goddess of night. Associated with, ready? Drum roll, please. Get the little drum roll, play. Dun, 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 dun. Night, goddess, also associated with rebirth that's the egyptian nut god there's a goddess of night oh holy night oh night divine there's a rebirth there's a birth associated with Egypt, Alexandria. You know where those little places are recognized at? Those are where your modern Bibles come from. Alexandria, Egypt. Nyx, N-Y-X. He's a goddess of night. Shalim, goddess of the moon. You know, when, when Abraham came out of Ur, or Abram came out of Ur, Chaldees, Ur was given to the moon goddess. Have you seen the representation of the moon, a Muslim, and that star? We're getting the kind of realm of the moon and darkness here, of religion. Ratari, goddess of night. Luna, Luna, Luna. You ever hear Luna? Goddess of the moon. But we're running into a night goddess 
night gods, and moon goddesses were not going the way of Jesus. John chapter 1 says he's the light. John chapter 3 said men hate the light, but they love the darkness. Oh, holy night, let's make it very divine. So what do you have? of the? Uh, listen, I grew up in the Catholic religion. I, I know. So when do you have the Christmas Mass, the Merry Christmas Mass, Christ Mass? You have it at midnight. You have it at night. What a time to go to church at night. You must be celebrating nut. Isn't that one of the things that, that they'll sell in stores around? A nuts, sorted nuts, crack your nuts, moon. So for the very fact, the title of this thing, and that it was written, wanted to be written for Christmas, number two, wrong thing, and it was requested by a parish priest, number three, wrong thing, making night a deity, number four, wrong thing. This guy is a, is a dealer and a distributor of wine and spirits, number five. <laughs> number six, he didn't want to have anything to do with religion, number Number seven, the wise men didn't show up when he was born. And there has been changes and additions to the Bible, which we find wrong in Genesis chapter 3. We found a warning in the law. We find a warning in Revelation. And we find a warning throughout the Bible. Do not add or subtract to the word of God. We find it in Proverbs. And yet we open up our hymns and we're told to sing hymns that go against the Bible. Now, who's correct and who's wrong? The Bible or the hymnal? It's either or. It's either or. You can't have unchristianity and Christian together. You cannot have the believer and the unbeliever. The Bible says no. You can't have Christ and Belial. Paul wrote that to the carnal church. You got to step forth and say, hey, is my Bible correct or is the hymnal correct? And then you got to look at the source of music. It comes back to Lucifer. The Bible is divine. The Bible is inerrant. The Bible is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit out of the mouth of God. The hymnals are not. That's why I'm doing these biblical truths of our hymns, so we can look at these hymns and can say, this one can be sung, this one can't be sung. This one, we need to change some words here to make it correct, and these, there's no correction at all. It's horrible. Matthew tells us we're going to give an account of every idle word. Imagine reading your Bible. All the way through. Yes, Lord, look, I've read the Bible all the way through. Look at that guy. Well, good. But what about that, that music you sung that went against my Bible? All the times that you read it, you passed that place, and still, you can sing something that's wrong. Whether you read it, say it, or sing it, if it's incorrect, it's incorrect. And that's what people don't want to hear. They don't want to hear they're doing wrong. They don't want to hear about a holy and righteous God. And for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. That's me. I want Christians to grow. I want Christians to do right. I want when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, very limited wood, hay, or stubble. We're all going to have wood, hay, and stubble. But let's try to get a little more gold, silver, and precious stone. And the very fact is, if you're listening to any of these messages that I'm doing and you turn away from the truth, you turn away from God, that's to your wrongdoing. You can't say you never know. You've heard it. So again, my opinion, I would not include this one. 